Hey folks, and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Uh, I want to get into a few things today, but I want to blow up another lie. This is from uh, just uh, today, uh, August 3rd, 2018. Interesting, as I was just researching this, crop circles created using GPS lasers and microwaves. Remember GPS, remember the crop circles that were going on in England and all over the place, and we're wondering how they did it, how they folded the, the wheat crops, the, the sheaves down into specific patterns, and we're able to do it without anyone seeing it. It just appeared in the middle of the night. <laughs> Directed energy weapons, folks, using lasers, microwaves, and GPS technology to create ever larger and more elaborate patterns. An analysis of evidence in Physics World Journal report that researchers had used magnetrons, tubes which use electrically, electricity and magnetism, there it is, electromagnetism, to generate a tense heat to mimic the physical changes in the flattened stalks in some circles which are linked to radiation. Professor Taylor, director of the Material Science Institute at the University of Oregon, said the findings suggest that crop circle artists may be using magnetrons found in microwave ovens or similar technology to complete their detailed patterns in space in a few hours. All they do is put a stencil in front of the laser with the screen, a stencil in the middle of the night with invisible rays. They create crop circles. Problem solved. Let's move on. Oh, and just one more point. Do you remember when we had the picture? Let me get one up here. I just want to tie the crop circles into the whole UFO uh, unidentified flying object. You see, this is one of the Indonesian crop circles. And I used to get all into this. I think it was, thought it was messages coming around our planetary systems and how they were showing us all that the uh, energies from outside were telling us that there's a much bigger world and all that nonsense. And do you remember here? Let me see if I can find it. The one where they were supposedly communicating with the radio beams they sent into space and space responded with a, a specific code that was all on it. Now we know it's all a bunch of bullshit. And here's the uh, Chill Bolton uh, photograms uh, allegedly around this satellite tower here in this crop field, which was dictated from, I believe, down in South America, uh, Peru maybe, where the SETI sent the signals out into space and responded, and they responded in the code of our radio frequency and blah, blah, blah. We communicated with other life. Again, a bunch of bullshit. The wildfire season, unfortunately, has gotten off to a catastrophic start in California. This year alone, across the country, some 7,000 square miles have burned across at least 14 states. To put that in perspective, that's equivalent to about 300 Manhattan Islands. The heat of these wildfires has been so intense that these fires are creating their own weather. Clouds, rain, and even fire tornadoes, people. These twisting whirlwinds of flame and ash dubbed fire nados, that's right, or fire whirls, are putting firefighters and mother nature in a constant battle to gain control. So how do wildfires generate their own weather? Here are the facts. All right, let's step back. Wildfires have two creators, nature and humans. Historically, before humans were around, lightning created most forest fires, and typically, that was a good thing. They worked to thin our forests and burn out dead brush. But with humans in the picture, unattended campfires, discarded cigarettes, and arson tend to be at the top of the list. In the United States, as many as 90% of wildland fires are caused by human beings. For the first time ever in history, scientists have obtained data from inside wildfires. A San Jose State University study details how wildfires can create their own weather and what takes place inside. Let's dive into the wildfire. Not really. The heat of the wildfire causes air to rise. That air then cools and condenses, forming pyrocumulus clouds, or in other words, fire clouds. These puffy clouds form around wildfires or volcanic eruptions and can sometimes produce localized strong winds, dry lightning, and a little rain. Fire tornadoes are caused by hot air and ashes that rise from the ground. 
When the hot air rises, it creates a vacuum at ground level that sucks in air, causing the fire to rise and potentially spin, creating a fiery vortex. I want to stay on the directed energies. We're all learning about directed energy weapons, the causal factors, how they work and whatnot, and I want to get into it a little more. We're seeing USA Today now trying to stoke the fires with this new normal fire NATO's explanation, but before they can get into it, we need to understand about directed energy basics. Now first about forest fires. An average surface fire on the forest floor might have flames reaching one meter, which is maybe 10 feet, 10 and a half feet in height, and can reach temperatures of 800 centigrades or 1,472 degrees Fahrenheit. Membranes, cars, glass melts at 2,500. Uh, cars melt around same temperatures, and we're talking double the temperatures here from a forest fire. Okay, so this is a really good site. New World War covers all everything about directed energy weapons, so I want to cause uh, give a little more before we watch the rest of this uh, uh, story being implemented about fire natos before it gets too much traction a variety of high-powered sonic weapons exist spanning the infrasonic ultrasonic and audible ranges there are weapons which direct sound onto a target and sound is energy and they can be considered directed energy weapons these weapons produce both psychological and physical effects. They include highly directional devices which can tr transmit painful audible sound into an individual's ear, tinnitus, or, and great distances and infrasonic generators which can shoot acoustic pro projectiles hundreds of meters causing a blunt impact on a target. It's audio, folks. It's not necessarily seen. Infrasonic generators can cause negative motions such as fear, anxiety, or depression, as well as biological symptoms like nausea, vomiting, organ damage, burns, or death, depending on the frequency and power level. Most of these weapons f uh, function between the frequency range about 1 hertz to 30 kilohertz. All right, reading down further, I'll include this in the show notes. It's a very good article. Vortex gun, because here you're going to hear them talk about the vortexes. You're going to see the fire NATO vortexes. Well, this is the vortex gun, the vortex launcher, also the vortex cannon, wind cannon, and shock wave weapon. It's capable of transmitting an invisible whirlwind of force, invisible whirlwind of force, to affect a considerable blunt impact on a target. It can also be used to transmit chemical irritants to a specific individual or group. Remember, we had the fire rash burns. It will allegedly be used to disable or destroy personnel such as enemy combatants or disruptive crowds. Most of the current information in this is classified, but in the late 1990s, the mili U.S. military said it developed a vortex gun in conjunction with various defense contractors at Penn State, Jesuit School, and U.S. Army Research Laboratories. Didn't Trump go to Penn State, folks? Its distance of at least 50 meters. The UK, and it, it has a distance of at least 50 meters. The UK, Russia, and Germany have also expressed interest. No, they're all on the same team. Dates back this weapon dates back to World War II, when he invented a device known as a wind cannon to shoot down bombers. Explosion-driven vortex capable of transmitting a high-velocity whirlwind of smoke at least two. 100 meters consisted of a combustion chamber of a size of a building which generated the explosion and a specialized nozzle at the end of the tube attacked to the chamber which formed the vortex in addition to the explosion driven method previously mentioned the air pressure which passes through the nozzle can be produced by an infrasonic generator although the projectile can be generated acoustically the actual energy projectile which collides with a target consists of air or gas Air is generated. It exists the chamber through a special nozzle that forms the vortex. It works in the following way. As the burst of air exits, the air in the center of the nozzle, think of a hose, like a garden hose, moves much faster than the air on the other sides. So it curves around from the center to the outer edges and forms a fast and moving circular air current, a vortex. A natural example of this is a tornado or the smoke ring of a cannon. Embers, flammable objects, and debris are picked up in the whirl, sending them thousands of feet into the air and causing more surrounding fires, intensifying the wildfire. The fire isn't just spreading across land, 
The extreme heat and erratic winds shoot fire nados into the sky. A fire nado can be large enough to rip trees from the ground and even pull roofs off houses. In this case, it's the heat from the fire as well as the air temperature that causes these spinning vortices known as fire nados. And they can be as, as narrow as a, a foot in diameter to as big as 500 feet in diameter. As far as the movement is concerned, there are a couple of considerations. First, the speed at which the whirlwind rotates, plus the speed at which it travels to its target. Both contribute to the blunt force effect upon the target. The faster the whirlwind rotates, itself rotates, the more stable and solid the vortex. The vortex can be transmitted slowly, similar to the way of a tornado whirling at 200 miles an hour moves across the landscape at only a few miles an hour, or it can reach its target very quickly. A vortex can hold chemicals, which it can accurately deliver over a great distance. A vortex can be composed of smoke, of steam, or just air. Because smoke and steam are lighter than air, they allow for a more stable vortex, but an efficient vortex can be made using just air. Victor Schauberger Technology implosion. Normally a burst of air passing through the atmosphere is, is impeded by friction and quickly loses its momentum. But because the outer edges of, edges of the vortex are circulating very fast, an almost frictionless environment is created around it where it allows it to freely glide along great distances. It strikes with the force of a solid object and can even bounce off structures and continue in a different vector. This is how long they've had this technology. So like we've been saying, these fires and laser fires directed energy have gone back a long ways. The first Iraq war in 1991. This is the Oakland Hills in California in 1991. And until uh, Mr. Anthony Haywood uh, disclosed to me and showed me, I didn't realize the Oakland Fire Hills in 1991 had almost the same exact profiles. Look at the house untouched, folks. It's the exact same type of profile. Look at the cars. This is from 1991. Torched, yet the trees are fine. Again, Oakland, October 1991. We're seeing this. And take a look at this picture here. And again, this is from the Oakland fires. And look at this fire. Look at how all the shrubbery and the bush and the vegetation have been cut away. It's been cleared. But look at it climbing the wall, and it's going to engulf those homes. Look at the vortex. Look at the tornado, folks. Same stuff from 1971 and the infamous half a house burned, which John Knox put out the video on so well. The military has had the technology for a very long time. Tesla technology, free energy, 100 years ago. So the vortex is creating these massive, massive walls of heat and flames, creating their own fire nados. Yeah, bullshit. 
It's the vortex energy created by the laser devices as we are proving here with the research. Look at this from a plane. It's busting through the clouds. This stuff is going straight up. There's no weather. There's no wind, they're saying. It's straight up. Where did the storms come from? We still don't know here in Santa Rosa. And look at the lightning. We have pictures of it. Dane Wigandon says, well, show me pictures, Dane. Well, Dane, here's pictures. Here's pictures of lightning strikes. They're visible and invisible, but when they hit the particulate matter of air with all the soot and the smog and whatnot, they can be seen. But for the most part, they're invisible. So, Mr. Wigginton, you need to correct yourself. We do have pictures of lasers. If you care to see, care to look, they're right here, Mr. Wigginton, and you need to get up to speed on laser technology with all your expertise working on a, a, a Bechtel 30 years ago and on a cover of a solar magazine. So look at this house, folks. How did it burn from above with a directed energy weapon? How about this one, folks? How did it burn from above with weaponized directed energy weapons? And again, we'll leave George, leave the tennis court. We may use it someday when we scorch the rest of the earth for our Agenda 21. And wrapping around a pipe, steel wrapping around a tree, can you tell me that's the new normal? And the animals, folks, we're seeing animals bloated from the inside. They've been targeted. And check this out. I didn't even have heard of this before. If you know anything about cymatics, these are waves in the ocean that are being terraformed or waterformed through harmonic vibrational frequencies, whether they're being conducted from above or from below. I don't know. I'm just learning about this as well. But look at these wave patterns. They're clearly being generated by some type of sound vibration frequency technology, Tesla technology free energy, vortex energy. And then take a look at this that I found on Facebook, posted in Finland, uh, the Aurora Borealis gone wild. They're just effing with us, folks. We need to wake up. We need to take back our world and, and speak out and let your truth be heard. And here's the other crucial point that needs to be made is the aluminum being sprayed by geoengineering over decades caused the aluminum oxide to accelerate the fires. These desiccants are accelerants that accelerate the fires, and that's why firemen have never seen these types of fires before. Heads up and on a swivel, plain truth out. Peace.